Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Serious. What is your scariest true story? Not safe for work. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Happy New Year. Once I was walking on the beach past midnight with a few friends. We were about 16 to 17 at the time. We came across an inlet which formed a cut into the sand about one meter deep. I decided to be a dumbass and jump into the water thinking it would be fine. I jumped and landed and kept going down. I was up to my chest in sand with water right below my mouth at my chin. My friends ended up getting a whole lot of vines from sand dunes and pulling me out. Never underestimate loose sand. When my neighbor was watching me through my bedroom window while I slept, was about 12 years old. The part that always scared me is how many times has he done this and what did he do while watching me? I found out he was watching because I woke up in the middle of the night and saw a dark figure at my window scared the shit out of me and wasn't sure if it was real or a shadow. We had a lot of snow on the ground, so I looked outside the next morning and there were footprints from his back door to my bedroom window. Now I don't let the light of day through my windows. As an adult, I have blinds and blackout curtains on all windows. First of all, this happened between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. I'm studying physical therapy and the first thing that we can do for a living is sell massages for family and friends mostly. One night, a classmate told me he was going out of the city but had a patient waiting and recommended me for to do the job. But the asshole never told me that the patient was someone of a cartel. I live in Tijuana. And when I arrived at the place, one man walked up to me and made me wait for like an hour and a half for the patient. When the patient arrived, oh my. He was drinking pure whiskey, snorting every two seconds, and he had two other guys behind him that were taller. He was like six feet and the other guys were like 6'2". I mention this because I'm not a very tall guy. I'm 5'7". Now imagine a 5'7", 22-year-old guy standing between three members of a cartel in an elevator going to the 17th floor of a residential building. I did my work and walked away as fast as my little S10 blazer was able. I said that the price was $75, 1,500 pesos, and the guy gave me 160, 3,200 pesos, but my heart was like, I don't give a shit about money. Get the hell out of here. I used to work at a fast food restaurant in high school. I had a coworker who was my age and she was really goofy and lighthearted and well-meaning. One day, she runs back to me in the drive through window from the front of the store and asks if we could switch spots and I agree. Her face was ashen white and she looked terrified. I walk toward the front counter and there's a guy in his 50s pacing around the lobby asking for her. I told him I didn't know and he started shouting at me and slamming his fist on the counter and threatening to go to the back. Turns out she had a stalker. It was her former best friend's dad who became obsessed with her and would take pics of her. She had a restraining order against him. The guy was so keyed up the entire time and the police took forever to come. It was nerve wracking. He came by a few more times. Never tell strangers your coworkers schedule. True. This is my grand uncle's story that happened many years ago. He lived on a farm far out in the woods, and one night he had been at a party and was on his way home. To save some time and energy, he decided to take the shortcut through the woods and across a neighboring farm. The owner of the farm had died years ago, and the place was abandoned, so nobody cared about trespassers. The guy who lived there always had white horses in his stable, and he was known for treating them quite bad. There was this old ghost tale about the place going around that on clear moonlit nights, you could still hear the faint sounds of the suffering horses around the stable. The night that my grand uncle had decided to take the shortcut happened to be clear and very moonlit. And as he walked past the stable, he could swear that he heard something. He thought to himself that it had to be a combination of being drunk and having a very active imagination. But suddenly he heard another sound and this time it sounded just like a horse. He froze right there. Part of him wanted to run away as fast as he could but he was also very curious. When more sounds that had to be from a horse came from the stable, curiosity got the best of him. He sneaked right up to the door and tried to open it just a little to peek inside. But as soon as he started moving, the door it gets forcefully knocked open and a big, completely white horse bursts out. It runs across the yard and disappears into the woods. He had no idea what to think about it. At first, he believed that he had just too much to drink and was making the whole thing up but he got a pretty good knock from the door swinging open that was very hard to find an alternate explanation for. 
The next day, a friend that lived at another nearby farm asks him if he has seen a white horse running around there. It had gotten loose and ran off the night before. I was hanging out at my girlfriend's ex now house late at night. Her parents and siblings were asleep. We were just hanging out, conversing with the TV volume on low. I heard a voice which sounded distant but felt like it was close by. I shook it off as nothing and continued conversing. A few minutes go by and once again I hear the same thing. Distant, but close. This time, it was a dark sounding voice. I've never heard anything like this in my life and it sounded so clear. Me not wanting to scare my friend with what I hear, I act as if the TV was distracting me. So I asked him to turn it off, but I really just wanted to hear this voice clearly. It, it came up again. Conversations continue. This time she stops talking, gets up and walks to check on her parents and siblings. She came back confused, but we get to talking once again. It's getting late, so we wrap up our conversation. In the back of my mind, I'm freaking out and wondering if I should say anything and look crazy. I hold off on saying anything. I get back on my bike and ride back home. I get home and she texts me. She was like, it was really weird. When I got up to check on everybody, they were all in deep sleep, but I heard something. This is when I let her know that I heard something as well. I described what I heard and she said she heard the same exact thing. But when she heard it, it said my name. I had never been so freaked out in my life. I couldn't sleep. The next morning, 12 hours later, I'm at home alone and I'm sitting in my bed. Behind my left shoulder is the entrance to my room. Out of nowhere, from the corner of my eye, I see a shadow glide down the hallway. It was almost as if it was running. My heart sank. I'm not sure if the two instances were related with one another, but I feel they were. I can't believe it was just a coincidence. I don't know if there was something following me within that 12 hour span, but it was the most freaked out I've ever been. I had just returned home on leave and stopped at the shopping center where my mother managed a retail store. After speaking for a few minutes, she asked if I would walk over to Publix and get her cigarettes. I said sure, and proceeded to Publix. As I approached and was within 25 feet of the entrance, I noticed a truck moving fast through the parking lot and slammed to a stop right in front of me. He got out of the truck with an AR-15 and began shooting people as they came out of Publix. I started to move toward him when he started to turn in my direction. I took off across the parking lot and did my best Duke Brothers impersonation and slid across the hood of a Cadillac and hit the pavement. He got back in his truck and drove across the street to that shopping center and started shooting again. I tried to run across the street to do something when a policeman pulled in between me and the gunman. That cop was shot in the head. The next cop who pulled in was shot in the leg and immobilized, at which point the gunman shot him point blank in the head, then barricaded himself with hostages in a wind dixie until five the next morning. Sorry if this sounds so clinical, but can't deal with the emotions of that day over 20 years ago. I had a woman come up to me in the grocery store and grab my arm. She asked me if I could pretend to be her boyfriend for a few minutes because a guy was following her around town. She said she was able to evade him for a minute told me her name and said, in the last store, I called my voicemail and made it look like I was calling my boyfriend. I'm single. He just won't stop following me. Help. Before the guy came around the corner, I asked her story. She faked to be more convincing. She was supposedly buying a cake for her sister's birthday. My friend in the bakery and I have a code for certain events that take place. We have one for the scenario, a time loop, being followed ourselves, etc. I said our code word to them and they let us hide in the big cooler room. The woman told me he has a gun. She knew because he was showing it off to a friend before. We sat in there for 10 minutes before being let out by a friend. The guy was still in the store. We faked ordering a cake after that just to be safe. We also walked out together. He followed. At this point, now I'm terrified. As I'm loading groceries in my car, she's standing next to me. He walks up and asks me why she's with me. I told him it'd be weird going grocery shopping by myself and not invite my girlfriend. He looks at her and says, you were serious about having a boyfriend? She agrees. He walks away, gets in his car, and leaves. After his car is no longer visible, I looked at her and said, I was two seconds away from shitting myself. Do you need an escort home or something as well? She said she'd love one, but is willing to wait for me to finish shopping. We go back in together, finish my shopping, and I follow her home. He's in her front yard, talking to her sister now. At that point, we circle the block, parked at a local restaurant, and I called the police while she called her sister. The sister said he came by wanting to know if she was single. The guy is arrested for multiple reasons. 
I drive her home, help her unload her groceries with her sister. I got both of their numbers just in case they needed me again and went home. This story isn't the scariest for me, but one that definitely had me on pins and needles. This was a year ago, but I sometimes relive the events in my head. Thank God my friend remembered our code. I went out for a few drinks with friends one Saturday night, left the bar and went back to my apartment where I live alone. I got into bed and fell asleep. The next morning, my friend sent me a message on WhatsApp saying, send me the photos from last night. So I flicked through all the photos from the night before to find at least 20 pictures of me sleeping. And in the background of the photos, the shadow of someone on the wall, clearly holding up my phone, taking pictures, all dated and timed during the time I would have been asleep. I almost killed a guy with an errant rock throw when I was 22. I was on a hiking trail in Berkeley Hills that came out to an area with a lot of picnic tables that appeared to be empty. Threw the rock for no good reason. Turns out a guy was resting on one of the benches. Rock was going right towards his head. I yelled as soon as I saw him. Somehow he saw the whole thing coming and effing caught it not far from his face. I was apologizing profusely and he just got up and walked off. The whole thing was surreal from start to finish. He wasn't even mad, and I have no idea why he walked off like he did. I think about that a lot, and how much my lives would have changed if he wasn't some sort of superhero. So I was 15 or 16 at the time, waiting for my bus at a bus stop, despite it being pretty dark, summertime. So this guy with a dog and McDonald's package comes to sit right next to me. I didn't mind it, he seemed chill. So after about 30 seconds, I was wondering what did he order? but I didn't know that McDonald's served guns. He started reloading it. It took me about five to 10 seconds to realize that this is not an everyday scenario. It scared the living shit out of me. Never have I ever ran that fast in my life. Not that scary, but it's surreal to me and kind of funny. I used to drive a company truck for construction sites to dig sites, etc. I was also experimenting with microdosing magic mushrooms. Anyways, I made a wrong turn one day and drove onto a large, empty student driver training course, which was basically a grid system of intersections and train crossing signs for railroads that didn't exist. It was all fenced in with a looming tree line that hid the one entry and exit road. I adhered to the traffic laws like a rat in a maze before eventually finding my way out again, but I felt so out of place like a bomb was about to drop on me. I witnessed 9-11 firsthand saw the whole thing from my office window two blocks away, saw the planes hit, the explosions, saw large pieces of paper falling from the windows that I later learned were innocent people jumping to avoid being burned to death, saw the buildings collapse, breathed in burnt metal and ash while trying to get to the Brooklyn Bridge and make my way home. Scary enough? Yes. Just moved into an apartment my freshman year of college. This was before the invention of cell phones. It was Labor Day weekend when I moved in, so I couldn't turn on the electricity or get a phone line put in until Tuesday. So I was living with candles and a battery-powered boombox camping in my apartment while settling in with no phone. It was really dark when a man started pounding on my door, screaming and yelling to let me in. I stayed quiet, hoping he'd give up, thinking no one was home, but he wouldn't quit and was tinkering with my lock. I barked out in the lowest, toughest, New York city voice, What do you want? He said someone was after him with a gun and begged me to let him in. I told him he better shut up or he'll be found by whoever wants to shoot him. Pissed, he pounded on my door harder. I had no phone, but knew there was a gas station on the corner with a payphone. I couldn't tell for sure if there was anyone with a gun out there, but knew this asshole was going to pound on my door and I needed to call the police. I slipped out the back door. I was lucky enough to have that led out to a very dark back alley sang the Mission Impossible song to myself to keep myself calm, and ran to the gas station to use their payphone. 911, what's your emergency? Tells her what's happening. We'll send someone right over. What's your address? Miss, what's your address? I just moved here yesterday. I can't remember my new address. Just give me a second. The cross streets are Grace and Boulevard, and I'm a few doors down. And then I remembered my address. Gave it, was told to get back inside and hold tight, as the operator deemed I wasn't safe outside on account of the chance I might get shot. Great. So I sing Mission Impossible theme to get me back home and hunker down waiting for the police. The front door was still locked and looked undamaged. Chain still in the door, so I waited by the window. Two minutes later, cops pull up. My apartment is on the second floor and has no buzzer, so I realized I will have to open my front door to go down the stairs to let the police in. 
Hoping I don't get killed, I flung open the door and bolted downstairs to let the cops in. As I tell them what happened, they fire up their flashlights to look around and find a man hovering on the stairwell that led from the second to third floor of the building. After some questioning, he admits he was pounding on my door. They cuff him and put him in their car. One officer questions me more, while others look around for the other fella with a gun, who, as far as they can tell, didn't exist. The officer that was talking to me told me that the man that was pounding on my door matched the description and used the same tactics as a serial rapist they've been trying to catch. Ended up seeing his face plastered on the front page of the newspaper after three of his four victims positively identified him. That police officer asked if I was living alone, told him yes, I lived alone in New York City and am tough. Besides, the landlord told me this was a safe family neighborhood. He begged his pardon, but advised me to move as he pointed to each of the surrounding buildings, saying, crack house, crack house, prostitutes, murder, whorehouse, murder, crack house, and another murder. And that was just this week. So you're saying my new landlord lied, huh? Yep, I would advise you to move. And if your landlord gives you any grief, tell him you'll contact me. I felt safer in New York City than I felt during the month I had to live there. When I was nine, I went to a writer spring version of summer camp with school. I woke up at 5 a.m. and went exploring outside without telling anyone. Walked on a lake that was completely fine the day before. Had skated on it. Ice broke and I went through, but there was another layer thicker ice one foot below. The day after, it was mostly liquid and there were fences to prevent anyone going in. I had nightmares for years after learning how deep it was and because of what could have happened. 